Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today I was casually browsing the activity feed on Steam, and I came across this guide that claims to fix Grand Theft Auto's cursed performance on PC. And his specs were awfully similar to mine, other than the CPU, my card is the 2070, which is a pretty much the 1080 as far as performance goes. Just uh, slightly better in some situations because, you know, driver throttling and stuff. But generally, the performance is on pair. So I thought, well, maybe this could actually help me out. So I decided to give it a go and see what happens. So I did everything that this guide told me to do. Launch options, which you go... Right there, you click on properties and then launch options. I put that all in, modify and as requested. So video memory, which is your amount of VRAM, your refresh rate, which is also variable. If you have a 144 Hertz panel or a 60 Hertz, 75 Hertz and so on, minus 60 Hertz, so I put that in. And um, I also made the stream INI file right there. If you look, down to the bottom, you can see that I actually made that file and uh, command line txt to force 1080p. That's I usually play at a 1440p, but as my desktop res is 1080p, I use uh, I use DSR for 1440p. So I was like, okay, perhaps for this video I should use 1080p because that would save me some time with the OBS work. It's like you know. Um, it's a little complicated when you switch uh, screen res. I would have to like stretch my 1080p desktop, and then perhaps once it went in game, it would be a little weird because it was 1080p stretch and 4040p. So 4040p is going to be like a little bigger than it actually than it's actually supposed to be. So I decided to go with 1080p. Doesn't really matter. It's just to show that actually it does address performance. And even in 1080p, the 2070 would struggle with Grand Theft Auto 4, which is not a problem anymore thanks to this fix, which is provided by the Vulcan wrapper more than the command line or any of that. It's more so on the Vulcan factor. So you click there to go on GitHub, you download that file, which is right here. And you go in the X32. Uh, folder, not the X64, and you drag the DXGI DLL and the D3, D9 DLL into the Grand Theft Auto folder like that. You can see it's right there. The two files. And that's basically it. You could go into the control panel and force better anti-aliasing and stuff, which would eventually decrease performance, uh, but make the graphics better. I'm just gonna go raw without any tweaking and perhaps tweak later on. I even plan to make another 4K benchmark video because I made one as soon as the patch came out last year, um, which did address some of the performance issues, but it was still a little weird. And um, so yeah, time to launch the game and see if actually we got any sort of performance improvement. Spoiler, we did, but you know, gotta prove it. So launch the game. Hope it doesn't crash. It won't crash, but you never know. So yeah, later on I plan to make another 4K video and another uh, another 1440p video so that you can compare the figures with my old videos, which shows that yes, there was a huge, massive improvement. Like no joke, it's actually night and day. Insane fix, and it was, I mean, this fix was around for quite some time already since last year, but I didn't know it existed. For some reason, it didn't get a lot of traction on YouTube or anything. I saw the guy and I was like, oh God, this is it, this is it. I gotta make a video about that. So graphics, graphics wise, we are looking at 1080p, 60 hertz, very high, very high, very high. The texture doesn't go above that so high. As you can see, the resource usage is fixed. We have the full 8 gigabytes. We have VSync off. Um, somehow my frames are still locked. Let's, let's go in game. Address performance with VSync first because it's the it's the recommended actually. That you use this sync to match the refresh rate of your monitor's refresh rate so that you don't actually 
you know, get your frames all over the place. As you can see, GPU usage is very low and it shows Vulkan as the render API, which is quite the point here. And Vulkan is a lot more uh, efficient than DX9, so we should have a massive performance improvement. As you can tell, we didn't even stutter while uh, getting into the open, which usually happens a lot with Grand Theft Auto. When you transition from indoors to outdoors, the frames would eventually get a little unsettled, but we didn't see that sort of unsettlement here, which is pretty good. We're going to take a car, drive around, and see, because that's where it usually kills the whole performance thing. You know, you think, oh my god, my game is running so so much better and then you start driving and the frames go like rah you know as you can see yeah we're dipping below 60 but you gotta consider i'm recording there's that and it does play a huge role mainly because grand theft auto is badly optimized so mileage may vary as far as gains go and uh well cannot complain honestly even though we had a little bit of a drop most of the time it's very consistent. It was perhaps just loading scenery. Remembering that I'm running this game off a standard hard drive rather than SSD. So that might be affecting it as well. And this is probably the best experience I've ever had playing Grand Theft Auto as far as uh, smoothness goes. Like it's very nice. Like it feels like a whole different game. Mainly when it comes to driving because beforehand it would stutter all over the place. And you can see the frame time is stuck at 16.6 with exceptions at times, which then again, understandably so. It's a very old game, very old engine. It's not optimized at all. The Vulcan does help, but it doesn't play any sort of miracle here. So do not expect a miracle. It will improve. It will certainly improve the performance and make it uh, dip less, but it will eventually dip because that's just what Grand Theft Grand Theft Auto is, so you cannot change the nature of the game on that aspect, but you can, you totally can achieve a more uh, acceptable performance for 2021, because you don't want to see your frames all over the place, you spent like a lot of money on a new gaming computer, you want to play this 2008 game, and the frames are all over the place, it must be very annoying, it is very annoying, and with this fix applied, you can almost have a next-gen experience if you ignore the dated graphics and eventual drops. It is very, very uh, much better in that sense. And as you can tell, 90% load now. We went into nighttime, and nighttime is usually very demanding. That's usually when the frames go crazy, like batshit crazy. And this time we didn't have much of the craze. I mean, the frames did drop a lot. But it wasn't for a long period of time, which would happen with the XD9. So we have a far more stable game now. Like, okay, we're dipping a little bit, but look at that. It goes right back into 60 at some point. It's perhaps just loading the scenery. Yeah, 46. That's uh, kind of yikes. CPU loads a little higher than usual. That frames it. Yeah. Still. It's not as stuttery as a DXD9 would be, and perhaps if we force the res higher, then again, I'm doing 1080p because I I didn't want to mess with the OBS settings to not like make it very confusing because my desktop's at 1080p, I run DSR, so I didn't want to increase the res, but I assume a higher res, uh, it might be a little more uh, tame when it comes to frames. Which I, I realized once I ran my test ride at 1440p. Like, frames were a lot more consistent than they are now in 1080p. Because you can tell the GPU doesn't work uh, at some, at some uh, moments of the game. You can see it uh, working like 35%, 40%. Which now it's a 97%, so the ideal load and frames still not 60. <laughs> kind of cursed. A 2070. Cannot run a 2008 game, 1080p max stop, but that's okay. I mean, honestly, what can actually run this? I, I I assume it might be down to the frame rate that's locked. Perhaps if I figure out a way to unlock the frames, I would have better luck. 
uh, achieving a higher frame rate. But the fact is, this is a lot better than standard DXD9. Like, night and day, there's not even a comparison. Like, DXD9 at 1080p was basically unplayable before. It would drop so much to the point you could not play at all. The firefight was just not, I mean, gunfights were not enjoyable at all because of the random frame drops and driving was not enjoyable either because it would just, you know, punish you a lot with the random drops. And it, it, I'm not talking about like five FPS drops. It was like half of the frame rate just going down the drain. It was basically unplayable. And mainly the reason why I didn't finish Grand Theft Auto to this day because I could not stand the frame drops. But I can look at very stable 60 FPS. Does it drop? Sometimes, yes, it does. You've guys seen it many times. Could be due to my hard drive. I don't know the fact that I'm recording, but it does get stuck at 60, 16.6 uh, uh, a lot of times during the gameplay, which is what we're looking for. We don't want the frames going out of place. We want that stability. And the Vulcan Wrapper does bring that. So I think this should be enough evidence that the Wrapper does address the issues, does fix most of it. Unintentionally, because the Wrapper is not for Grand Theft Auto specifically. It's just, you know, it's for everyone, mainly for Linux people. But, you know, the fact that it does fit like a glove and does fix and make Grand Theft Auto a lot more enjoyable is a plus, a good plus. A very nice find and I'm glad I decided to randomly swoop through my activity feed on Steam today because otherwise I wouldn't have found out, wouldn't have downloaded Grand Theft Auto again and found out that finally I can play this game at 60 nearly at all times. And see, we're driving for quite a bit now without any drops, which is amazing. So, yeah, I think this is more than enough evidence this point you can see the textures are not glitching anymore because that was something that would happen a lot with Grand Theft Auto the more you drive the more textures glitched road textures sometimes the city would simply despawn and you would be driving into oblivion basically and now it's not happening anymore you can just go over the city as much as you want and the game won't break which is also another excellent thing that uh came like you know a blessing uh, let's save this first uh let's find a safe house drive to the safe house hopefully without any frame drops to prove our point and uh oh my god conjoined twins jeez i don't really want to watch that do you yeah a lot better than uh, the, the base game, that's for sure. And it's such a simple fix. You don't have to download anything like very heavy to fix it. It's just a wrapper, just to come in line. You, you gotta write yourself. You don't even have to download it and uh, stream INI file. And it's basically it. It's all you have to do and bingo, you have a fully playable. I mean, substantially more playable. We can say, yeah, it's still not like fully perfect. But I do assume a higher res, uh, uh, pushing the graphics card a little bit more. This must be a lot more fun. So yeah, that's it for the video. I'm going to save and end the video in a bit. Because I don't want to out tab or recording. God knows what could happen. Game crashing, that would be shameful. So let's just save it here. Close it and uh, end it once I get to desktop. So... Feedback's much appreciated. If you guys have any suggestions, they are very, very welcome. Don't be shy. Inputs are always valued. So, yeah. Bye-bye, everyone. You all take care and hope this has been helpful. I'm going to put a link to the original guide and the, the GitHub link so that you guys can download into that yourselves. So, yep. Later, skaters.